in the Christian worldview, history is summed up in the person of Christ. And the very first Christian who wrote something about this was St. Paul. He's our first Christian theologian. And he has an acute sense of this linear view of history, except he recognizes that something fundamental has changed about that worldview with the arrival of what he calls the fullness of time, namely the Incarnation. And I'll read to you from his letter to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 4 through 7. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to ransom those under the law, so that we might receive adoption. As proof that you are children, God sent the Spirit of his Son into our hearts, crying out, Abba, Father. So you are no longer a slave, but a child. And if a child, then also an heir through God. Note how Paul understands what has happened in the Incarnation. Jesus' coming among us as a human being is the most perfect expression of God's love for humanity, of God's interest in history. God goes in search of us. God so perfectly pours out his love to us in the person of Jesus that all of history is reoriented in that one critical moment of the Incarnation. Everything changes with the Incarnation. Whatever came before the Incarnation, before the life of Jesus, is now seen as a preparation for that first coming when Jesus is born in Bethlehem. And then everything in history after Jesus' life, death and resurrection, is regarded again as a preparation for his second coming, his glorious and definitive triumph at the end of the world. Everything, in other words, hinges on, pivots around the person of Jesus Christ. 